Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 13 of The Lockup. I am your host, Junior Ruiz, alongside my co-host, Big B, Brian Adams. What up? I liked it. Um, so, these next two weeks, we got a two-part episode for you. Excuse me. Um, for so something a little different from the norm. Yeah, yeah. We're, um, you know, Battleground was uh, yesterday. A uh, hell of a pay-per-view in some ways. Uh... Raw should be pretty interesting tonight, but anyways, that's ne- neither here nor there. We've got, uh, like I said, special two-part episode. First part this week, uh, we're going to do, in our opinions of at least, the top ten entrances in WWE history. And when we say, or no, I wouldn't even say WWE history, but just in wrestling in general. Yeah, it's it's mostly WWE. Yeah. Um, the concept behind this was, you know, it's... There's been, over the years, so many superstars who've had memorable entrances when they come out. They just, you know, it, it, it's just something about their... Like, they, they put real thought into their entrance. Not somebody who's just walking down the ramp to pose in the ring really quick and then let's ring the bell. Like, there's just... Their entrance is a part of the character they play, you know? and it, or, or, or furthering the story to enhance who that character is. So we decided we were going to rate top 10 entrances and then next week we'll do the top 10 themes. But uh, for now, we got the entrances. And, you know, uh, Brian and I went back and forth all week over who we thought should be on the list. Um, And we pretty much narrowed it down to the 10 and uh, we were in agreement of it, minus maybe one or two. But for the most part, we're all good. It was actually a lot. We were really on the same page for a lot of it. It was a lot easier. I thought it was going to be a lot of arguing. Right, right. But it was pretty simple. Yeah. Okay, so without further ado, we're going to start with number 10. Brian, who is number 10 on our list for top 10 entrances? It's time to come aboard the whole train. Godfather. Godfather comes in at 10. Holy crap, look at it. Yeah, I Um, I blew that out. So number 10 is the Godfather. And uh, I don't know your reasoning for putting on the list. My reasoning is at that time where the Godfather was hot, I mean, dude, you've never seen like that. Guy came out to like a song with nothing but bass. He was a pimp, literally, and he came out with, with hose. hose. And it's like you never saw anything like no. that in the wrestling business before. And the fact that the announcers would refer to them as hose, you know, like wow. And it was the whole train. Yeah. So I mean, that was always you know different because you've never seen anything like that again either. But there have been um, memorable moments with the so-called hose. Uh, one of them being the debut of Lisa Marie, a, as we know her as Tara or Victoria. From oh, the, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, when she debuted, she debuted as one of the Godfather's hosts. Um, you know, came out smoking a cigar at times. You know, it was just very different. It was. You know, but it was very in tune with It was the time. cool. And it was nice to see him, like, come into his own character once the Nation of Domination split up. Yeah. Because he was in the nation, right? Yeah, was he was that, comma. that was before. He was comma. Okay. Um, but no, it was just, it, for that time, it, it fit. Because that was the late 90s, WWE was doing their Attitude Era. But that's what it was. Like, people were more accepting, for some reason, of pimps and hoes. You know? Speaking of being abs- ex- accepting of Attitude Era-esque things, that'll lead us into our number nine. Number nine. DX. Two words for you. Suck it. Now, DX was, in my opinion, the group, as far as WWE goes, that really started the change into going into the Attitude Era. You know, you had Sean and Triple H, along with Rick Rude and uh, China, who were coming out, and they were seriously just being degenerates. You know, mooning the camera, Mm -hmm. doing the crotch chop, pointing at their crotch, doing their crotch, like... Holy wait, who the, does the, this? The, what the, am I watching? The, the squirt guns where they're yeah, they're manipulating the squirt guns like they're you know. It was just you know, and then they had the the uh, their actual interest you know, um, you know, hey, this is what's going on tonight. This is who we're fighting. If you're not down with that, we got two words for you, you know. And just telling people to suck it. Like, dude, who did that? I mean, you couldn't have been a kid in school back in the day and not tell somebody to suck it and get in trouble by your teacher. I mean, almost everybody. Yeah, no, not back in the day, definitely not. You know, like, DX just revolutionized. The and then how they, their entrance, the, first of all, their song mm-hmm. was very different. You know, it wasn't a traditional quote on, 
quote unquote wrestling song is very uh, very metalish. Yeah. Um, their entrance video itself was you had it looked like it was society rebelling. Mm-hmm. You know. The, the music was very Rage Against the Machine. Thank you, thank you. Yes. So it was basically the change in attitude that mm-hmm. you know, no pun intended, that was coming, and DX pretty much revolutionized that. And it was it, it, they're like I said it. Their attitude and that pa- video package kind of represented what society was like at that time. Absolutely. So, DX at number nine. Who's number eight, B? Number eight. Bring us to more current times and another great group of superstars, The Shield. The Shield. Three, like you just said, three great superstars, man. And Dean Ambrose, WWE champion Seth Rollins, and the heavyweight uh, Roman Reigns. Um, you know, they, they made it special by coming in through the crowd. Now, Sandman used to come in through the crowd at ECW, but his was a little bit more offbeat. You know, it was, hey, I'm part of the fans, liquor. Right, the beer, The yeah. beer and the cigarettes and stuff. Where the Shield, mm-hmm. no, we're, we're coming through the crowd because, well, one, we're renegades. We're, we're not here with the rest of the locker room. We're here to take down the locker room, so we're not going to come out where the locker room comes out of. You know, and it's just the music, the bass, when it would hit, and just to see those three guys walking down the ramp, or excuse me, walking down the stairs, just just look like they had a mission in their eyes. It's specifically Roman Reigns, which they he still like a, uses the entrance today. They look like a SWAT team. Yeah. Like I said, Roman still uses the entrance today. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was just crazy, but I think it, it reached its peak when they started coming out with the face masks. Yeah, Remember that? I do. Where they had the painted face mask. That was killer, man. That was man. cool, man. That was killer. And you, you always wondered, you know... Wait, one of them going to trip over that barricade or something? Yeah, and Seth Rollins. Man. Yeah, oh, Seth Rollins. He, was it Seth Rollins? Yeah, he ended up falling, and then Roman Reigns was laughing at him. And this is when they were like heels, so they kind of—I mean, he broke kayfabe. But I mean, dude, your best friend just busted his ass on TV. Yeah, that's pretty funny. So you got uh, ten Godfather, nine DX, eight The Shield. Who do we got for number seven? Number seven, the man, the myth, the legend, Stone Cold, Steve Austin. Now, Stone Cold was another one I would put in um, comparison to the society-changing attitude of the late 90s. You know, theme music aside, the guy, he he, he didn't march to the ring. He didn't walk to He had, like, this strut. It was, because, like a, it was very much like a, like a badass, like, I'm going to beat I'm here, ass, yeah. Like, he just kind of, like, you know, the way he walked, like, his shoulders would swing, and he's like, I'm here to fight. You could just see like, it he in was his there posture. To, he was there to kick ass. To drink beer pretty much and then he was the first superstar to really start flipping people off right. you know he's hitting off for yeah that buckles. was his things yeah it just basically f the society you know f you f you know f uh authority pretty much you know stone cold is very different you know even his exit was you know especially when he won a match he's on the turnbuckle drinking beer you know a la the sandman but just i don't think sandman drank it on camera as frequently as stone cold did yeah, I don't, I don't think, I think Sandman just did it in, in the, the entrance, entrance and that was it. Right, where Stone Cold was like, I'm going to hang out in this ring and do right. it. Right. Like Sandman, I think, had maybe like, maybe a six pack in those pants. Yeah. Those athletic pants. I don't know what the hell you call those things now. They had a name for them. Sweatpants. They? Were they sweats? Joggers? Whatever. Trainer pants? Whatever. But he I, he may have six packs or a lot. Stone Cold, there was like a case. Under the ring. Of course, under yeah. the ring. He was doing it. Yes, he was. Like a pimp. So number seven, right? That was number seven. Seven, Stone Cold. Number six. Yes, number six, more innovators from the Attitude Era, in my opinion. Like some guys that came out of D-Generation X and kind of spun it into their own thing. The New Age Outlaws. Now, those guys had an interesting entrance. Um, most of the time, the only part of their entrance song that mattered was the very beginning notes. But after that, it was all Road Dog on the mic. Talking. Burder, burder. Oh, you didn't know? Right, and that's it. After that, I didn't even know how the rest of the song went because it's Road Dog talking over the music the whole yeah. time, which I thought was good because every mm-hmm. single time he came out, it was something different, mm-hmm. you know? And then they had their shtick. They get in the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, the Generation X probably brings to you the, you know, whether they were the tag team champions or the number one contenders, you know, place in the blank. But, you know, and then you always got, of the world, you know, and then... The road dog, Jesse James. The bad Billy Gunn. Yeah, the new age outlaws. And then, of course, Billy Gunn being the man of few words. <laughs> being the big cast of the day. Yeah. 
if you're not down with that, we got two words for you. And, you know, that was a great example of crowd participation, if there ever was one, in my opinion. Totally. You know, the Outlaws pretty much. It was. It's just all around a great entrance, man. Like, yeah. The, the, like, he was almost harkened back to, like, a carnival barker. Like, with, uh, you know, getting out there and, like, getting everyone engaged and mm-hmm. the whole. He was, dude, Road Dog, like. Road Dog was a great stick man. As awesome, they man. It. Awesome. That's probably my favorite tag team of all time, the New Age Outlaws. Yeah, they were pretty good. What we got next? Go to our, we're at the middle list now, number five. Number five. And one of my favorite wrestlers of all time, the Ultimate Warrior. Wow. Like, this guy's entrance, man, was just explosive energy that we have never seen since. Since. No. There was nothing before, and there's... nothing like it before, and nothing like it since. You know, for those who've never are unfortunate enough to never have seen the Ultimate Warrior's entrance in the WWF days, the music, the the rock music would hit, and the guy would just come running out of the right. back. Just run, just I mean, full and I don't mean like yeah, speed. like you running from not the a nice full jog, like running, yeah, right, like you running for your life. Yeah, and it's like he started it from his locker room. Because it's the way he came busting out that curtain wasn't like, oh, I just started this and I just built momentum. No, he started it. Yeah, he was full speed coming out that curtain. Yeah, full speed. You know, and he ran around the ring, ran up the steps, grabbed the ropes, you know, and he's like doing. Right, like, shaking the rope every time. The dude was just a ball of energy. He was amazing. It's like he drank 50 monsters. You know, the guy Seriously. was just. He was always turned on. Always. One of the. One of the most impressive, as far as energy-wise, entrances ever. Uh, yeah, I, there, there has been no Like, one. I mean, that guy was doing his thing when I was, like, a little kid. And as an adult, like, still one of the most impressive entrances. I totally agree. As far as, like, just being amped up energy. Yeah. And, you know, as a wrestler, I would think you need to build up that adrenaline. However however way you gotta do it. I mean, but, I mean, that was... Right? And then to come out and put out the performances that he did in matches, too. Like, think about all the... What? His matches Are we watching good. the same matches? They were good. All right. I'm just saying, it takes a lot of energy. I'm not saying that they were technically, like, marvels. I'm just saying that's a lot of energy to expel. Okay. Before you've actually ever gotten into the match. Correct. Ultimate Warrior. Awesome. Never forget that guy. May he rest in peace. Number four. Lisa, number four. Now, these guys totally, I mean, you could almost say that if not for them showing up on the scene, we might not have gotten the spark that WWF needed at the time, WWF, to become Attitude Era. But true innovators, the NWO. You know, I'm such an NWO fan that I'm honestly thinking of getting the tattoo of the logo. Really? Yeah. Seriously. Wow. Like That's... on this on my left arm because my left arm is it represents like the evil side. So I got like minus this all villains I want on this arm, and this can be the all ear, the all hero. But I've thought about getting like the NWO logo here, like maybe slanted or something. But yes, the NWO. Um, those guys, they oozed what cool was back in the day. You know, first of all, that song. Like, my sister would hate it when I was watching WCW because that song would come on. And she thought it was, like, one of the most creepiest, scariest songs. It scared her. Really? I think it was the voiceovers. Yeah. Um, But it was just a, such a different song. And then the guitar. Dun, da, dun, 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 dun. Like, it just, it was too much for her. Um, But, I mean, they had, they, I mean, they started the cut scenes. They started the... You know, you're, you're, you you see one thing, and then you cut to the live camera feed. Then you go back to something else. But the camera was shaky. It was black and white. They changed the art of the promo. Yes. Oh, yeah, they did. You know, and then, like I said, when they walked to the ring, what NWO member ever ran to the ring? Yeah, no. no. They all walked. And they didn't even walk. <laughs> like, they strutted. They're like, the match starts when I get there. Right. Like, they oozed what it was to be cool. You know, they just, they put that out there, you know. It was just so different. And you never seen anything like that. And the way they just showed up on the scene, too, man, when they showed up in WCW. Yeah. Like, if you weren't watching WCW at the time, as soon as those guys hit the scene, you were. Yeah. 
And I was one of the people fortunate enough that, like, I mean, back in the day, for those that remember, Nitro aired twice. Nitro aired during Raw, competing. Yeah. And then they replayed. Yeah. Now, I would watch Raw, and then I would flip in for Nitro, because it was just on. So I was actually there for the ground floor. And then and then it became the show to watch. Mm-hmm. But those guys, man, just... Hulk Hogan, dude, uh, totally reinventing himself. Oh, yeah. You know? Doing something you never thought you would see Hogan do, and it was brilliant. Something people to this day are waiting to see John Cena do, which you probably won't. If he does, the I'm only sure time it'll be I would we'll I could about. ever see that happening is if Cena has like I mean peak, even with the kids, where even the kids are tired of seeing Cena, then and only then because Cena's a, you know he said I can't you know there's too many kids who look up to me right you know imagine the day. That even those kids are sick and tired of Cena and his gimmick, and they turn on him, and there's not one person in that building cheering Cena. Then and only then will you see Cena turn heel, and that in turn will bring you the next it guy. Right, and that could be a decade from now. Yeah, who knows? Because I mean, look at in in most people's opinions, Hogan was pretty much washed up and done at that point. Yeah, I mean the Hulkamania thing had been going on for twenty years. It was stale. That's why he left WWF because yeah. Vince wanted to focus on the new generation, which was Scott Hall and Shawn right. Michaels and you know guys like that. So I mean, way to totally reinvented himself and reinvigorated his career. Yeah. Moving on to our number three. Uh, this guy hasn't made it up to the main roster yet, but I can't imagine what his entrances will look like when he does because in, in my opinion like I wanted this guy higher on the list but granted with who our top two are it's understandable why he falls at number three Finn Balor mm-hmm. the guy's just the theatrics dude I don't recall ever seeing anything like him before he's definitely one of those guys where he is in tune with his theme music. Um, like, as far as, like you mentioned, the theatrics, it goes hand-in-hand hand with, with it, you know. Some some very few superstars know how to use that to their advantage. Um, but Finn does a phenomenal job, and also of incorporating the body paint that he used to use in the independent scene when there was he didn't have to worry about copyright. So he was always painting himself or dressing up as Carnage, dressing right. up as Venom. But now, because of copyright and all this stuff, he's found a way to incorporate aspects of the Venom character, of the Carnage character, into his uh, ring attire and his body paint and everything like his that. His demon character. Yeah, which is, yeah, it's another thing, you know, like, he's, inv- he's, he's merged them and now it's the demon, you know, um, with the Predator braids and uh, the, the streamers or whatever you want to call them attached to his wrists. But uh, the guy crawls, he crawls out to the ring. Granted... It's a short crawl because, you know, it, the entrance isn't as long as, like, a Raw or SmackDown. But still, the guy crawls to the ring and only stands with a certain uh, note in the songs. You know, and then the fact that he leans against the barricade and, like, basically, uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, mer- not merges, but just immerses himself with the fans. Yeah, and then climbs in the ring and does his shtick, you know. But uh, Finn is definitely different. I will. I, I will definitely. It's uh, honestly one of my favorite entrances of all time. Hence why it made it on our top ten list. Yeah, no, I'll agree with you. I, I definitely agree with you because when we were making this list, we said it's got to be something that stands out. It can't be something that you know you've yeah. seen a million times. Why is it on the list? Because it's different. And yeah, it's absolutely. Very memorable. You probably never see anything like it again. That's why I said I, I kind of am curious to see when he makes it to the main roster what they do then. Right. Because that's a long way to crawl, man. It is a long way to crawl, but that brings us uh, to our number two guys who, you know, prove that you can take your time getting to the ring. And actually, our same with our number one guy, but the number two guys, they prove, you know, hey, we're here and you're going to wait for us to get to the ring. And well, that is the no, Wyatt family. No pun intended with that. That's right. right here. The Wyatts. Um, not just Bray, but the entire Wyatt family. The Wyatt family. Their intro video, man. Just the them on the screen and with the lantern. Which I think they like, they could have avoided. They, they could have like, fixed that. He's got the the flame lantern in the video. Yeah. But then they've then got, they got the electric, electric lantern. Come on, yeah. man. 
is it really that much of a hazard to use the flame lantern walking out there? Yeah, it's Put not a like minimal somebody, amount gonna... of oil in it. It doesn't have to be on that long. Right. But their entrance is awesome, man. Yeah, the song, great. But it's another one where they go towards their music. Yeah. The music starts at like this this slow, steady, maniacal, almost eerie, mm-hmm. no pace to it. And they walk to the ring and with that same and like that same feeling you get. You know, Bray's holding the lantern, followed by Luke and Eric. And then the lights turn off when, you know, Bray blows out the, the lantern, quote unquote. And next thing you know, Bray's sitting in a rocking chair. And he watches the matches from his chair while uh, Luke, uh, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan do their thing. You know, it's so different. Just so. And now that the fact that the crowd has gotten into it. And as soon as those lights right. turn off, nothing but cell phone lights. Mm-hmm. You know, because, you know, we don't do lighters anymore. Right. Because everybody vapes. Garbage. <laughs> but, um, anyways, <laughs> that's a whole other story. I think those guys are douches. The, um, it's, it's, yeah. But anyway. The Fireflies, isn't that what it's pretty Yeah, they're called the Fireflies. the Fireflies. But, I mean, they've done, WWE has taken the liberty with the Wyatt family to do so much. Remember the program he had with Cena, where all the lights turn off, they turn back on, and the ring is surrounded by kids. Dude, how creepy was that? You know? But, they've uh, done... They need to go back to that. Yeah. The Which eerie... It, silence of the Lambs almost aspect. Because, I mean, I just, know they're trying to, like, brand Bray as the new face of fear. Well, he needs those dudes, too. Even, even our number one guy on this list at some point had disciples. Yes. Yep. Oh, I thought you were going to go in with Oh, it. no, I wasn't sure if you wanted me. I wasn't <laughs> no, sure if you, you were done go, with yeah, the No, wives. I'm good. I'm good with the wife. So that I'm brings done. us to our number one. The probably the best entrance in wrestling history. The Undertaker. Yes, correct. There, Like, who else has there been besides The Undertaker? Like, it's, nobody. The guy is strictly, like, dude, that's The Undertaker. You get the lights are off. You get the the wind blowing through the music. You know what's coming, but you're still anticipating it. You're still like and like the lightning strikes and yeah the the, the fog. The, it's awesome. And then the camera work where he stands at the top of the ramp and the camera goes from the ring towards the ramp in the smoke. And once the smoke clears, you see the dead man just standing there. And then you hear the music real slow, the piano organs, and he takes his time. That just. I mean, if there's ever been a slower entrance in the history of wrestling, I don't know what it is. Yeah. But The Undertaker set that tone, and he's been doing it 20-plus years. Yeah. You know, he just takes his time and just paces to the ring. And when he gets to the ring, that's a whole other thing. You know, he lifts the coat, slowly walks up the stairs, raises his hands, slowly summons the lights to turn on. Walks in the ring slowly. The way he removes his hat, you don't see his face until the hat is completely off. You know, it's just like, holy crap. I've been in an arena where The Undertaker has made an entrance. And let me tell you, dude, that is some crazy stuff. I mean, because that's that's where McMahon is a genius when he comes in with this. Because they turn that air conditioning on in that building full blast. You just feel the chills of when this guy's coming out. I was also fortunate enough to be there when Kane was still, you know, the big red monster. Mm-hmm. Same thing, when he did the flames and everything. Grande Rojo Macana. Sorry. When he did the big flames, you could feel the heat, you know? But, I mean, Undertaker's entrance is just, I mean, dude, everybody knows it. Every, just everybody. I used to There's watch a lot of like wrestling it. in Spanish. Okay. It's, you know, the big red machine. Everybody knows it. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. And it's, you know, and it's one of those entrances still to this day you look forward to when he's going to wrestle. What is his entrance going to be like now? Because it just becomes more and more. And even like the build up to him showing up. Yeah. Like at WrestleMania last year and all the, it's just, man. The theatrics involved. It's, yes. It's just, it's crazy. You know, it's just absolutely, it's breathtaking. It's seriously nothing you've ever seen before. 
and it's just it that's definitely an entrance that fits the character you could do this list 10 years from now and the undertaker is still going to be on the top of the list oh yeah no doubt and i i, I don't see anybody coming in and taking a better entrance than the undertaker no. i just honestly do not you know unless you've got some guy who is like God, I unless they do some crazy off the wall with balor when he comes up like him just jumping off the top of the Titan Tron, right. landing, doing a couple uh, barrel rolls to the ring, and like jumping off a trampoline, jumping into the ring, right. doing like twenty backflips. You know, like it's just <laughs> that's crazy. I I don't know. But, so recapping our list at number ten, we got the Pimp Mac Daddy, the, the Godfather. Godfather. At number nine, G Generation X. Number eight, The Shield. Number seven. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Number eight. The New Age Outlaw. Number six. How do you go from eight to oh, seven did I to go eight? To, well, because I, I don't know, man. Because I'm dyslexic. Number six. The New Age Outlaw. Number six. Outlaws. The New Age Outlaws. <laughs> Number five. The, <laughs> the Ultimate, Ultimate Warrior. Warrior. Number four. The New N- World Order. W-O. Number three. The Demon Finn Balor. New NXT Champion. Yes. Number two, the Wyatt family. We're here. And number one, the dead man. The American badass. Which that was, those were horrible entrances, by the way. The American yeah, it's just riding a motorcycle. Yeah, it was, it was crap. The Undertaker. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. We wanted to clarify, we mean the dead man, Undertaker. Yeah, we're, yeah, not we're the American this is badass. not the American badass version that we're talking about. In no way, shape. That entrance, not on this list. No. No, the we're talking man, about the classic. Hells, yes. Classic Undertaker. That's all we got for top 10 entrances in the uh, the wrestling biz. Join us next week when we will be discussing uh, the top 10 entrance themes ever. You know, some of these themes are just, you know, they're too memorable. You know, they, yeah, they some really of them are. Too awesome. um, and Brian is going to do us the honors of actually playing the themes while we discuss them. So you actually, know, I mean, we can't, this is being a podcast, we can't show you the entrances, but you can listen to the themes as we speak about them. So join us next week when we get into that. Any questions, comments, concerns, you can email myself, Brian, or Alex, who is the host of Remixed Reviews, at our first name, at comicsremix.com. Follow us on Twitter, at comicsremix, facebook.com slash comicsremix. Uh, you can look up reviews, Remixed Reviews on uh, Instagram. Uh, we're all over, man. We're easy to access. Just get a hold of us. Click the link down below in the description on the YouTube video, JDF or CM Punk. Sign the petition and share. Please do. We'll catch you guys next week. Too sweet. Nice. I'm out. Peace.